Hey everybody, we're back for uh, part two of the Rebound series. We're checking in with Tony Lyman and Eric Shriver tonight, uh, just seeing how everything's going, how the season is starting off for them, uh, and kind of the the state of the state with their ensemble. So, Tony, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How about you, Caleb? Excellent. I'm doing well as well. And Eric, how about you? How are you doing tonight? I'm great. Just finished a rehearsal a little while ago and uh, just finally coming down from it. Very good. Very good. All right. So, Eric, I thought we'd get started with you tonight. Uh, in the last episode, we talked a little bit about what on what your ensemble did um, a year ago for, for the season that, that wasn't to be. Um, and so what I thought we would do is we'd kind of pivot tonight towards this season, this, you know, this year's ensemble. And so I'm interested with you as an independent group to find out a little bit about how the recruitment process went for this year and kind of the size of this year's ensemble, just how all of that has gone since you're an independent group and, uh, you know, you don't have a home base of membership. How did that work coming out of the pandemic for you and your team? It was, it was really interesting. Um, obviously, we do like the typical just throughout the summer and early fall, just social media blasts and recruitment and just calling our students and the usual you'd expect for independent. Um, we have an interesting mix of like veteran members, uh, members who did the virtual ensemble last year. But if you saw the video, it was just a battery only thing. Uh, we didn't have a front ensemble. So we're still in that point where we are building a group from scratch, even though we kind of have a few vets in each section from the group last year. Um, but we have zero front ensemble vets from last year because we didn't have a front ensemble. So uh, that recruitment has been basically from just absolute scratch and just, here we go, let's start an ensemble. So that's been an interesting part of the process. How would you say the numbers have been for you or the numbers were for you during the recruitment process? Were you pleased with the turnout and the number of people interested in participating this year? Uh, overall, yes. Uh, it, it took longer to dial in the front ensemble than it did for the battery as pretty much every independent group is. It's, it's easy to find some snare drummers. Um, we were fortunate to find some really good ones, but as far as just physical numbers, um, that, that always took a little bit longer. And uh, there's been a little bit more of a, uh, like some members would be able to do it. And then a few weeks later for schedule or financial reasons, et cetera, et cetera, would not be able to do it. So then we're back to like recruiting. So I've been recruiting longer this season than I think I've ever had to do before just to get a consistent membership. Yeah. And I imagine that's probably a pretty consistent story. If we were to you know, take a cross sampling of all the independent ensembles out there. You probably hear some pretty similar um, stories. What um, what does the membership look like this year, Eric, in terms of numbers for each section for you? Um, we're basically just like a typical full size battery, uh, eight snares, four quads, five bass drums, five cymbals. Uh, we have uh, four or five members in the visual ensemble as well. Uh, and then a front ensemble is probably a little bit smaller than a like like a full front ensemble size. So we're 10, 15 people uh, in the front ensemble. Okay. So pretty good size, pretty, you know, I would say fairly typical and standard for a lot of our independent open ensembles, you know, some a little larger than that, some a little smaller than that, but that's good. Um, good to hear that the interest has been high, even if it took a little bit longer to get everything sorted out. Um, so Tony, same kind of question. Obviously you have a scholastic ensemble, so we're recruiting from the membership of the school. How has that been trying to relaunch the, the traditional indoor percussion ensemble for you and your community? I would say it was, it's, it's been great. You know, they kind of pushed us. They, they have heard about this mythical Dayton thing. And uh, so they all have been wanting to experience a normal year. You know, the seniors are the only ones that have been to Dayton. And from there, you know, everybody has just, um, you know, heard all the stories and, and, um, you know, that, that's a big part of our recruiting tool is, is, um, you know, having that experience and then knowing what it's like, and then, you know, passing it down to the younger people. But as far as our numbers, they are, our largest group that we had was in 2015. And this group is the same size as that group. That's fantastic. I know that's something that a lot of us were concerned about, um, just are we, how long is it going to take to bounce back? And I'm hearing right. these kinds of stories from a lot of ensembles that are like, 
we're down a little bit, but man, we've got a lot of kids that were hungry to do this and jump right back in. Or, you know, even if our numbers are down a little bit, the intensity and the passion and enthusiasm is through the charts for the students that are showing out and, and participating. So I think that bodes well for us. And I'm happy to hear that that's been the case for both of your ensembles. Exactly. So um, I'm also curious now, as we're, we're moving into this season uh, and ramping things up, um, I would love for both of you to share with us just a little bit about your production schedule, how that is going so far, kind of where you are in your show production. Uh, how much of the show do you have out on the floor at this point? And would you say that that's kind of consistent with where you normally would be at this time? Are you a little bit ahead of schedule, not quite on schedule with uh, pre-pandemic years? Um, where do things stand for for your group? Tony, we'll start with you with, with Petal High School. Where do things stand on that front? I would say that we're, we don't have as much on as we normally do, but we made that commitment from the beginning that we were going to take things slow and that the end goal is going to be world championships mainly because our approach to the fall was if you can physically wear a drum and you can go out there and not fall down, you're, you're on the battery. We marched seven snares, four tenors, five bases. I think we had about 23 in the front ensemble. Um, and so just everybody was out there. And um, so obviously we did not take those same numbers for indoor and we were upfront about that from the beginning. You know, it, just because you're playing this instrument in the fall doesn't mean you're gonna be playing in the winter. So we have a lot of people playing different instruments. A lot of people who have not experienced the, um, the type of demand that goes into what's happening indoors. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't skip any steps. So, um, you know, it, it would, you know, we could get out there and, you know, run like our hairs on fire and go, oh, we're behind, we're behind, behind, but not really. We need to make sure that they're getting the fundamental training that they need to sustain the, the, what we have for the long run. Yeah, I think that's so well put. Um, if you, if you had to put a time on it, could you estimate how much of, elapsed time that you have on the the floor right now or at least you know maybe a percent I would say of the show. we have about two and a half minutes okay so far. good and good. that that's probably that's a little bit less than we normally do have about this time but um i'm making myself not panic about that yeah i, I think that's the right move I'll, I'll give some more thoughts on that in a second um mm -hmm. eric would love to check in with you as well especially with the independent thing the advantage is there's not a traditional marching band season that you have to wait until afterwards but not all of your members hail from the same school and you can't do after school rehearsals and stuff like that. So where are things looking with, with your independent group right now in terms of production schedule? Um, if we went on like ideal of what we wanted, I think we're technically behind that. But based off of what we, once we got started in the season and we started being very real, like with what we actually need, um, I feel pretty good about where we're at. So it, very similar to what Tony said, it's like we wanted to spend a little bit longer on just the foundation and just make sure everything is rock solid. And once again, since we're such a new ensemble and new membership, uh, there it took a while to like settle the foundation to get everybody on the same page. So yeah. I, th I think that really benefited us. And really, we didn't put much show on the floor until a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then we just kind of hit the ground running. And I think it's paying off right now because uh, we're able to crank out a lot of show in a weekend because the fundamentals are there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's been paying off. That's such a great point to make. Um, if you had to put some time on it, what do you what do you think you estimate having on the floor at this point? We just finished staging and ensembling most of our movement too, so I think we're three minutes, just a little okay. bit past three. Okay, that's good. So kind of the same ballpark, you know, give or take a little bit here or there. And I think both of you make such an excellent point about just not rushing the process and and giving yourself and your ensemble some grace this year. Um, knowing that we're coming out of a pandemic and the fundamentals are not set the way that we would like them to. And, um, you know, our, our students maybe are a little bit behind in how quickly they can digest information and apply new skills and uh, get additional show out on the floor. So I think that's a solid approach to take. And for anybody that's watching this, um, know that you're probably in the same boat right now and it's not worth stressing over all of that. Um, just, you know, stick with the process, stick with your whatever timeline makes sense for your ensemble and taking strides in that area. 
Um, Tony, I'm wondering if I can, can pick your brain a little bit, just in terms of getting show out on the floor, getting things staged, uh, having the students start to rep things and, and have the show start to take some shape. What's gone well in this area for you? Maybe has been like a positive surprise. Um, and then also what's been a challenge for you and your ensemble in this realm, just so that we can have some like real talk and everybody can hear, oh, the, yeah. these things that I'm struggling with, Tony and Eric are, are having the same challenges with their groups. Um, I, I, one of the things that I know that is going well is their ability to adapt, which I would not have thought that they would be able to do this, you know, um, given how much how little experience they have with doing it in this way and doing it with this process. Um, there hasn't been much, I would say, resistance in, or unwillingness to try new things, which you would think with, and, and, and I'm redefining what youth is right now. Mm. Normally we would define youth as a freshman or an underclassman, but youth is now experience with doing the activity in the way that we have set it up in the past. So most of our most of our group is young by those by that definition. So their ability to adapt and to just go with the flow has really impressed me in how fast they've been able to progress with that kind of mindset. And, and it wasn't like we we coached that mindset. Normally you would have a bunch of talks and like we, you know, we've got to go in this way, we got to go. They kind of came prepackaged with that kind of thing. And I and I don't know if, you know, just not having anything and then all of a sudden having something to do is fostering that kind of um, um, attitude or positive attitude. I don't I don't know where it's coming from, but I've been really impressed with that. Um, one of the challenges is I know that I have to say things with great detail now. Whereas, you know, this activity can be comprehensive over the years. You know, you say one thing and you have a procedure and a process one year, and then you come back the next year. And instead of saying a paragraph, you can say a phrase, hey, go, go do the thing, go, go get the floor, you know, go get the mat. Can, and there's a process that happens after you say that. Um, and now when I say, hey, go get the floor, it's like, nobody moves that some what's a floor you caught it in the tarp last week what what are you talking you know right. i mean these little things that like that that i wind up having to sit down and go okay all right this is how we do this and and it makes the process a little bit laborious but i have to go this is all a part of the reboot you know um and you just have to call on your patients and and Keep telling yourself those things. And I have to imagine some of that is also some gaps in leadership. We would rely on students so much to do things like get the floor out and the ensemble ready to go for downbeat. And all of a sudden those students, you know, haven't learned that as part of the, the culture that's been passed down the last couple of seasons, there was a gap. And so now right. we've got to re-educate the, you know, our, our student leaders about what we need them to do to keep the ensemble chugging along and operating the way that it's supposed to stuff we take for granted i'm sure and I, i'm exactly. sure everybody coast to coast is having those experiences where they're like it never has been this hard before and that's because there's all these little details that we've got to attend to as well eric um what would you say for you and your ensemble in terms of uh something that's gone well or been a surprise kind of in this realm and then uh maybe some some challenges that you've experienced just as you've tried to get show on the floor um, and, and really dive into the production rather than just the fundamentals. Yeah, um, what's gone well is pretty consistent with all of my groups. I teach three high schools and Gold Indoor. Uh, and a lot, a lot of people I've talked to uh, is the attitude and the mindset of all my kids is top notch, like best I've ever had, uh, top to bottom. All the kids are just there and down to do it. So that's been fantastic. So we're we're rusty. Everybody's a little bit rusty, um, but the adaptability and the attitude and the mindset about, um, you know, digging in and working hard, uh, it's there. So that, I mean, that's something that we always want. I'd rather have somebody who's teachable than just talented and experienced. 
So that's in a, in a way it's, I think in the long run, it bodes really well for us. Um, so everybody's just been very, very positive about it. And, um, you know, everything that we went through the last year or so, I think has been a kind of a filter for the, the kids who maybe would do it, but don't have quite the attitude for it. Um, a lot of them kind of filtered out and all the kids who are here now really want to be a part of it. Yeah. And I think that's been really, really a beneficial thing for us. Right. The ones that have been willing to come back and, you know, put in the time and the work and the energy are those that are really hungry for it and are going to give you their all. Um, as opposed to those that are, you know, here primarily for social reasons, we certainly welcome all of them, but through this pandemic, maybe uh, a few of them have chosen some other things to do. I think that's a good point. How about any uh, challenges that, that you or your ensemble have experienced so far? Um, the first obvious one uh, for us is obviously because we're a, a newer ensemble. Uh, it's just like the logistical challenges, uh, just getting consistent facility at the very beginning of the season. Now we're locked, we're good. Uh, just the equipment truck, all the, the usual like logistical challenges from an administration organization standpoint, um, everybody's rusty. So even the admin who is involved in the, the before times, like nobody really remembers how we used to do it. So we're starting from scratch right now, even behind the scenes. Um, I think that's probably the easiest one. And then the other one that I think I'm sure everybody's dealing with is just attendance. Um, and Oh, I haven't had any attendance issues for like not important reasons. It's just always, you know, I got something, I got sniffle, blah, blah, blah. Stay home. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's been an interesting challenge. That was the, the next thing I wanted to ask you about. We're recording this here at the, the very end of January. So that'll give some context in terms of production schedule um, and things like that. But if you look at the situation of COVID-19 and cases around the country, um, the Omicron surge has been happening as, as I think every ensemble has been trying to get their show out there on the floor. It hopefully looks like that's kind of crested and now we'll be on the downward slope of that. Uh, fingers crossed. Have the two of you, has that impacted your rehearsal and the availability of staff members and performers and things like that um, thus far? Or I should say, to what extent has it impacted things for both of you? It has impacted us greatly. Um, we haven't had all of our members at rehearsal yet. Um, and I think our last Saturday, we do uh, nine to nines every Saturday. And uh, the last Saturday that we had, we had two snares, um, two tenors and four bases. And I think there were seven kids out of the pit, whether, whether they were either, um, had COVID or quarantine as a part of our school's protocol. And, and so they have a five day quarantine. And then when they come back, another set of kids have to go out for another five days. We've had staff, it's, it's, it's been a real challenge on attendance for sure. And that also has a lot to do with the, the you know, a, impacting on how much show we have on the floor. Yeah, certainly. Eric, how about for you and, and your team? Um, I'll say it's obviously not been ideal for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we've been lucky, knock on wood, where it hasn't been a huge amount any one weekend. It's just a consistent, like every weekend, you know, I, I check my messages on Friday night and you're like, okay, these three members are out. We'll see them next weekend. And I just alert the staff, hey, we're gonna miss these people. And then one of the staff members is like, also me. I'm like, yep, okay, that makes sense. So we've just been very flexible. Um, fortunately, we haven't had an influx of like a whole bunch of members all at the same time. It's just been, you know, this spotty. We have just holes every single weekend. Um, and maybe it's because the attitude is also just because we're kind of used to it at this point. But you just show up on Saturday and you're like, all right, we have three th these three holes this weekend. You're like, all right, we'll just work around it and just right. keep doing our thing. I, and I think that that speaks to what great educators both of you are, uh, both of you are, are, and that's uh, just the, you know, you, you roll with the hand that you're dealt. So you walk into rehearsal and you go, here's who's here. Let's make progress with what we've got um, and then do everything that we can to bring everybody else up to speed as quickly as possible once they become available as well. So um, I, I know that we're not out of the woods on this yet, and it's something we're going to be uh, rolling with all season long. Hopefully the prognosis nationwide gets better um, here in the coming weeks, but uh, certainly something that I'm sure every ensemble has dealt with 
um, to some degree, and that's certainly going to impact our ability to get things on the floor and get things solidified as quickly as we want them to be, and just something we're going to have to roll with in order to be able to have these great experiences. So I appreciate both of you speaking candidly about what that reality has been and kind of how you've tackled it, um, and certainly not allowed that to um, negatively impact the the morale and the psyche of the team trying to put the show together and certainly the performers that are trying to get it out there on the floor. Um, so I mentioned we're recording this uh, here towards the end of January uh, for anybody that's watching it. Um, last thing that I kind of want to conclude with is just an idea of what's coming up next for both of your ensembles. I'm curious when your ensemble's debut performances are scheduled to be for this season. Um, I imagine that we're probably ramping up pretty close to that for both ensembles. So um, Eric, would you share with us first, when is Gold's first show on the calendar, that, that date that you've got circled to try to be as prepared as possible for? Uh, we will be debuting our stuff at the uh, WGI Regional late February. So I think it's February 26th. Okay. Remember, right? So still about four of that, you know, fairly late debut for an ensemble, but still four more weeks to get things uh, staged and on the floor and be able to come out of the gate really strong. Yep. Um, I hope I would anticipate is probably the plan. And Tony, for Pedal High School, what's it looking like for, for your group? It's the same for us, the same weekend that uh, Eric talked about, February 26th or 20, I can't remember, 26th or 28th. Um, right around there. <laughs> that weekend, I, I, I try not to look at it too hard. Um, sure. Um, but we're doing our local circuit show um, at Nesh Neshoba Central High School in Philadelphia, Mississippi is when we when the pedal train rolls out once again, and uh, um, I try to keep a smile on my face to <laughs> to mask the fear in my heart right now about it because <laughs> it's it's uh it's coming. But um, you know, all in all, I feel like we're going to be prepared for it. Um, and you know, it it was something that I had to tell myself. We, we're we're going to it's going to happen. And um, it's hard to find that morale when, when, you're, when you're staring at two snare drums. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly when things don't feel like they're going great or when it's exactly. not, you know, when, when the ensemble that you're looking at is not what you dreamt up in your head and you go, right. this, is not, this does not look and sound the way that I wanted it to. I don't have the right. number of performers here that I'd like it to. It's kind of hard to keep that faith, but uh, I'm glad to hear that you're doing it and, and stealing yourself away from that as much as possible. Yeah, so um, you're both looking at probably about a month away or so uh, for your two ensembles to take the floor. And so I, I'm sure that um, it still feels quite a bit off and there's a whole lot to get accomplished between now and then. But I have to imagine that the, the performers are starting to get excited about the show coming together and starting to kind of take shape um, and starting to think about that time that they can get back out there in front of other people and start to perform live for in-person events as well. So good times. And I know a lot of the, uh, a lot of ensembles that are watching this um, probably have their debuts. I know some circuits started as early as this weekend. So some may have already had their debut performance and many others will be doing it within the next couple of weeks or so. So um, I think what Tony and Eric shared tonight is such good uh, advice to just go slow, uh, give yourself grace when things aren't going exactly as you want them to um, just roll with it, lean into it, give great experiences to your performers and, um, you know, keep the end result on, on or, you know, keep your focus on the journey um, and hopefully having everything be outstanding by the end of the season, even if it's kind of a long haul to get there, I think is great advice. All right, Tony, Eric, anything else before we sign off for tonight? No, I, 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 I've, I've said it over and over again tonight, but uh, don't let things not feeling normal make you second guess the process. We're, we're doing this so kids can grow and not, um, don't let the idea of the competitive side of this make you lose sight of that we're helping kids grow and, and more so recover from a once in a hundred year thing. Couldn't say it any better than myself or uh, myself. So everybody on that, I think we're gonna log off for tonight. Thanks so much. Uh, Tony and Eric will ca catch up with you again in another couple of weeks. Thanks guys. I know. Awesome. Thank you.